Are you ready to get your life organized? You deserve a lifestyle makeover. Welcome to Lead Her Enterprises. Join the movement with a community of lead hers to make over your lifestyle the fabulous way. With the signature Organize Her Lifestyle Makeover course, planning and style for clarity, focus, and success. And introducing the Lead Her Academy with your organization and lifestyle strategist, Shamir Hunter, a certified professional coach here to help success-driven women and a few good men plan and organize their life with grace and ease. So you can get the inside scoop on how to finally create the balanced lifestyle you've been longing for. Get organized and focused while making everyday life much easier. And achieve those burning goals that have been keeping you up at night that are well overdue. With cutting edge signature tools and resources proven to change your life from ordinary to extraordinary. Shamir is the author of The Plan on Purpose Planner and Sparkle and Shine, The Job is Mine book. Creator of The Lead Her Alliance, a free social networking community. Organize Her Lifestyle Makeover Signature Course, The Lead Her Academy, and the signature line of Lead Her Wear. For more information and to connect today, visit www.shamirhunter.com. But guess what happens? Like, for example, babies are not born prejudiced. Babies are not born racist. They are taught that based upon their surroundings and what has been deposited in their lives over a period of time. That begins to define them. So we, we, each and every one of us, we are defined by our history. But God comes to change that history. You see what I'm saying? But just because you were born again, that doesn't mean your mind is renewed. You're now tuned into the world of Kingdom Vision Christian Center with Pastor Kevin Brown. Equipping and empowering God's people as instruments of righteousness where your freedom in Christ makes the difference in your life. Now for today's message. Uh, let's see, 28, First Chronicles 28. I'm going to point out certain, certain truths from the Bible. Let's go to First Chronicles chapter 28. First Chronicles, please, when you come to church, bring yourself a Bible. Amen. Amen. Or, if you, you know, if, you, if, if, um, if you know you, you're up on technology, you know, and you don't use Bibles, you use them Bible apps, that's fine, too. As long as you're not on the Internet <laughs> and doing other, you know, on Facebook and all that kind of stuff like that, doing service. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. I came by one day, I was walking. In the audience one day, somebody was on Facebook. Thank you, Jesus. You know? My God. Uh, First Chronicles 28. And you're going to say amen. amen. Now, I may read this in more, I'm a re, I may read this in more, tra, more than one translation just to, uh, so I can make an impact. All right? Um, verse 9 says, and thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. With a perfect heart and with what? Willing a mind. willing mind. Serve God with a perfect heart or a complete whole heart, right? And with a what? Willing mind. You see that there? A what? Willing mind mind. It says, with a willing mind. Listen to this. Uh, For the Lord searcheth all hearts. Now, 
Let's deal with this word hearts for a minute, okay? For the Lord searches what? All hearts. Okay. Let's explain that for a moment. <laughs> when the word, when, when the Bible uses the word heart in the Old Testament, primarily, now you, you have to study this out for yourself, okay? Because um, there are some scriptures, you may find a couple of scriptures in there that pertains to the physical heart. All right? <laughs> Let you know that now. Because some people say, you know, I, you know, I, you know, when you ask them about the Lord, they tell you, they got, I got God in my heart. And they go like this, I got God in my heart. And that's not correct. You don't have God in your physical heart. Your physical heart is a muscle. It's like a pump. If, if you're driving a car, it can be an oil pump. That's right. Once that oil, once that oil pump stops working, <laughs> you better stop that car quick. Because if you don't, that what happens is the oil from the oil pump, it stops pumping oil throughout the engine. And guess what happens if you're still driving it? You ruin the engine. Mm -hmm. So that oil pump pumps oil throughout the engine block, keeping it lubricated at all times. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Once that oil pump stops, that's how I mess up my engine in my um, truck. I had a truck one time, and that oil pump stopped, stopped pumping oil to the engine, and I ruined the engine because I was going real fast. Had the kids in the car, and I had some kids in the car and everything. Just blew the engine because <laughs> the oil pump stopped working. And that oil, once that oil light jump, it's too late. If that oil light, oil light jump on and you, and you just cruise it down the road, it's too late. <laughs> you done ruined that bad boy. That's what happens. But your physical heart, God is not in your physical heart. It is a muscle. It pumps your blood throughout your entire physical system. Are you hearing me here? Yeah. But the word heart here, when you study it out in the Hebrew, it means the inner man, put down inner man, it means inner man, it also means the soul. Say soul. So when you see the word heart in the Old Testament, primarily it's talking about the soul, the will, the mind, the intellect, your affection, your emotions. And most of the time when you see the word heart in the Old Testament, that's what it refers to. Now, when you understand it from that perspective, it says that God searches those things. So God searches your feelings. He searches your mind. Yeah, are you hearing what I'm saying? Your thoughts, all these things is what the Lord searches out. That's why we, we may not know a man in his, physical, in, in his natural understanding will not know what's in your heart unless God reveals it to the man of God. How many understand what I'm saying? So I don't know what's in your heart unless God show me or unless you show me. How many understand what I'm saying? So the Bible says God's telling Solomon to serve the Lord with your soul, with your mind, with your emotions, with your affections. Are you listening to me? Now, why is that so important? When you study out the New Testament, it talks about a renewing of the soul or the renewing of the mind. That's uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, right? Mm -hmm. uh, be not conformed to this world. Come on, you know the word, right? Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, okay, this chair. All right. I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, Minister Levy, get me a chair, man. Please, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bring me a chair over here. Now, look, I'm going to show you something. This is a chair, right? Okay. The reason why I'm bringing a chair here is because we do this sometimes. This is done. You got a chair, and I'm not going to recreate the chair. Don't need to do that. 
But I can what? Renew it. Right? I can renew that chair. I can change. Once the upholstery gets old and faded out, I can have it redone. I can renew it. That's what, that's what the Word of God does, does to your mind, your emotions, your affections, the way you think, huh? your will, your, your, your feelings. All of that is in the compartment of the soul. Are you listening to me? So what the Bible is saying, even though man is recreated by God's spirit, because man is a Man is a spirit. Come on, y'all, talk to me up in here. Okay, let me say it this way. You are a spirit. All right, there you go. You are a spiritual being. You possess a soul and you live in a body. Okay, the, the spirit is already reborn, recreated by God himself. So that means you are perfect. Amen. You might not understand that, but you are perfect. Amen. <laughs> That's right. You are already perfect in God's eyes, spirit-wise. Yes. Yeah. But it takes a renewing of the mind to cooperate with the man. Because the word comes to deal with the man's soul. To deal with the way you think. Huh? To deal with the way you feel. You know, God never gave us emotions to direct us. No, he didn't. God never gave you emotions to direct your life. Your emotions will wreck your life before it directs your life. <laughs> you better listen to what I'm saying. No, your, God never gave you emotions to lead you. God gave you the word and his spirit to lead you. But so often, we allow our feelings to dictate what we should and should not do. Yes. That is the truth. Yes. And that's why we find ourselves always in trouble. We always find ourselves in situations that we should not, we know in, we know in mind we should not have done it. Yes. But my feelings were telling me something totally different. Yes. So I went with my feelings. <laughs> I went with my emotions. I went with how I felt at the time. And then by the time you get through, you realize <laughs> that was the worst thing you could have done. Because you allow your unrenewed mind, unrenewed emotions, unrenewed feelings, all that stuff is unrenewed. It needs to be renovated. <laughs> because you... You, you gave your heart. See, let's this, this, this this finish reading the scripture before I go any further. Um, let's read it again. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts. You see that there? See, this is what we got to get, saints. It's not about what we are seeing with our eyes. It's never about that. It's always about what we can't see. It's, that's what God deals with. That's why God can tell a man of God to tell you some things. And you may not understand it, but you better listen. It's for your own good. <laughs> because, because by the unction of the Holy Spirit, we should be speaking. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? That's why, I, that's why a lot of times, you know, we don't want to bring, we don't want to bring our, the people that we see into the man of God. Because the man of God might see something that I'm not seeing, and I don't want to hear that. Oh, I know what I'm talking about in here. See, there are certain things that God can reveal to the man of God that, naturally speaking, we can't see. That's, that's the heart. You see what I'm saying? And when I say the heart, I'm not talking about the one that pumps blood, saints. I'm talking about your soul. I'm talking about that inner man. 
See, the center of man is the soul. The center of man is his soul. And when, you, when you look at it from a, when you, when you use an illustration, you see that because man is a spirit, he possesses a soul, and he lives in a body. The center of man is the soul. The center of man's life is his soul. You hear what I'm saying? That's why, that's why the Bible says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth what? What does that mean? That means that which is filling you up. Whatever is filling up your life, that's what's going to come forth. That's what that means. It means that which dominates your heart. Whatever it is that dominates your heart, which is your life, which is the center of man's life, it's, it's almost like, you ever use, we use that term sometimes when, we talk about, when you're studying biology and, you know, the center of the earth. Yeah. Huh? You ever heard that term? The, the center of the earth. You know what I'm saying? The earth's core. You know what I'm saying? That which, uh, yeah. that which the earth is made out of. Yeah. You know, there, there is a center in each and every one of us Amen. that makes us tick. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's used figuratively, but it says like the center of man's heart. Well, he's not talking about the physical heart. He's talking about that which makes you move, that which makes you tick. You understand? That which defines who you are. That's what God wants to change. You understand? That's what he wants to renew. Because you are the sum total, your soul, not your spirit. Once God recreates you, you, you are brand new spiritually. But, but, but all that, all that which defines you yeah. as a person comes out of the abundance of what you surrounded yourself with. Like a child, a child that comes into the earth, a child that is born into the world, becomes a sum total of its deposits. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. A child, a baby that is born is pure. Even though it is born in sin and saved in iniquity from a spiritual perspective, perspective, its soul is pure. But guess what happens? Like, for example, babies are not born prejudiced. Babies are not born racist. They are taught that based upon their surroundings and what has been deposited in their lives over a period of time. That begins to define them. So we, we, each and every one of us we are defined by our history. But God comes to change that history. You see what I'm saying? But just because you are born again, that doesn't mean your mind is renewed. Look at Brother Jane, oh, he's laughing. But this is the truth. But notice what, notice what God is telling this man Solomon. He said, listen, Solomon, you need to be able to serve me with a willing mind with a perfect heart. In other words, I don't want some of you. I got to have all of you. You, you see what I'm saying? With your whole heart. Now, now, let's look at another scripture. Y'all getting this so far? Let's look at some more scriptures. Uh, go to Psalms chapter 7. I'm still in the Old Testament. Psalm 7. We're talking about how we're going, how we're going to, how, they're talking about, the world is talking about how we're going to settle our nation. <laughs> how are we going to, um, you know, excuse me, how are we going to come together? Well, th there is no coming together if we're not willing to change. Amen. That's right. I mean, that's just the truth. We know what, the, the church, we know what the answer is. But the world don't want to hear that. See, they, they want to talk to somebody who can, get, who can be intellectual. You know, we want somebody who can stimulate us intellectually. You know, and that's what they want to hear. But they don't want to hear the truth. The truth of the matter is we need to get the gospel back in schools. The truth of the matter is we need to get the truth back into these areas where we took the truth out of. The truth of the matter is we need, we need men and women of God that we can go to and consult with these type of matters. How many understand what I'm saying? 
They don't want the wisdom of God. I'm listening to all those foolishness on TV. You know? <laughs> I, I got the answer for y'all. <laughs> yes, Lord. Well, I got the answer. But you don't want the answer. You want another answer. But there's only one answer. Hallelujah. Men's hearts have to be changed. How many times? You can't. Laws can't regulate the heart. Laws cannot regulate hearts. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? D. Laws cannot regulate hearts, not laws. Only God can do that. I don't care how much laws you make. Men will break every last one. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Shoot. So laws were never created to regulate men's hearts. They were regulated to curb sin and place judgment on, women on wrongdoing. That's it. We don't need more laws. Hallelujah. We need truth. That's what we need. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now listen to this. Psalms chapter 7, right? And verse 9 says, verse 9, Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just. For the righteous God trieth the hearts and reigns. You see that there? You see that there? Notice it says the righteous God tries the heart and reigns. That word tries means test, to see what it is. God will test you. God will allow you to be tested so that your heart <laughs> can be revealed. See? He allow it so that your heart can be what? Revealed. Do you know some of the subtle tests that people don't even realize the test? Can I give you all an example? I'm going to give you all a little example. Like when somebody is promoted in the church. We're going to promote sister so-and-so because she's been so faithful to God and this and that, and we're going to make her this. And then you got two-thirds of the people in the church talking trash within their hearts. <laughs> Mad, jealous. See, although that one thing, that one thing, that one thing the Lord allows caused two-thirds of the people in the church to be offended. Jesus. You know why? Because their hearts are not right with God. And God would allow these things, listen, God allows it so that you can see your own heart. <laughs> I, I never forget something happened to me one time. And I felt it in me. I wanted, I wanted to be, when we was in my, my first church, I was, a, um, I was a deacon, and I used to do, a, you know, we started growing. I started growing in the Lord. You know, you start growing, you know what I'm saying? And you start being used of God and stuff, you know? And then um, I started teaching uh, Sunday school. And the thing about it, folks used to love when I, when I taught Sunday school. I mean, when they found out I was teaching Sunday school saints, Sunday school would be packed, packed, but it affected me in a negative way. Because I remember um, that particular morning, somebody else was supposed to teach. And I wanted to teach. I was sitting in my chair, and I wanted to teach. I felt, I don't know how I can explain it. I didn't feel right. You understand what I'm saying? You know what I did? I knew it was wrong to feel that. Are you ready to get your life organized? You deserve a lifestyle makeover. 
Welcome to Lead Her Enterprises. Join the movement with a community of lead hers to make over your lifestyle the fabulous way. With the signature Organize Her Lifestyle Makeover course, planning and style for clarity, focus, and success. And introducing the Lead Her Academy with your organization and lifestyle strategist, Shamir Hunter, a certified professional coach here to help success-driven women and a few good men plan and organize their life with grace and ease. So you can get the inside scoop on how to finally create the balanced lifestyle you've been longing for. Get organized and focused while making everyday life much easier and achieve those burning goals that have been keeping you up at night that are well overdue. With cutting edge signature tools and resources proven to change your life from ordinary to extraordinary. Shamir is the author of The Plan on Purpose Planner and Sparkle and Shine, The Job is Mine book. Creator of the Lead Her Alliance, a free social networking community. Organize Her Lifestyle Makeover Signature Course, the Lead Her Academy, and the signature line of Lead Her Wear. For more information and to connect today, visit www.shamirhunter.com. This is Pastor Kevin Brown with Kingdom Vision Christian Center. I'm hoping you're having a blessed day today. Listen, the Bible says, if we have given unto you our spiritual, it is only right that you reciprocate with your natural. We are in ministry here to bless the world, to bless you, to be a blessing. And we want you to support what we're doing financially. We want you to partake of the blessing that is on this ministry. And we believe that if you support what we're doing, God will continue to bless you and even increase you in every area of your life. We want you to hit us up on Facebook, um, communicate with us, uh, sow a seed, going to our website, uh, Kevin Brown's Ministries or Kingdom Vision Christian Center, either one, or you can mail in your uh, financial support at P.O. Box 501. That's Johns Island, South Carolina, 29457. Again, that is P.O. Box 501, Johns Island, South Carolina, 29457. Be a blessing. Amen. We want to stay on television so we can bless the entire nation. Thank you. Remember, your freedom in Christ makes the difference in life. from the world of Kingdom Vision Christian Center with Pastor Kevin Brown, located at 1945 Beast Ferry Road in Charleston. You can also visit us at www.kvchristiancenter.com and like us on Facebook. Remember, your freedom in Christ makes the difference in life.